Ooh. Oh, it's that time of the week again, isn't it? Uh, all right, Internet, what have you got for me? Hello, my name's Richard Kent. Today I want to talk about the second law of thermodynamics. No, people are still bringing this up? I don't know if you've heard about that, but it's a really important law. I think everyone's heard of it by now. Even those who have not learned about the second law of thermodynamics in school would have at least been exposed to it when creationists cry out its name in an attempt to disprove evolution. I mean, come on, this video is only two months old. We've been debunking creationists on this topic for years now, and you're still bringing it up. God damn. Uh, the second law of thermodynamics talks about entropy. You know, I'll actually give you some credit for that one. Entropy is really what the second law of thermodynamics describes. Don't give me words like disorder. Disorder is not measurable. Entropy is. And to be honest, it's a really poor substitute. So let's just stick to entropy, shall we? Basically, if I have a hot cup of tea in my hand, after half an hour, I end up with a cold cup of tea. What's happened is the tea has become cold and the room has become slightly hotter. Yeah, okay, great, you got the idea. But are you going to mention that the room would have to be assumed to be isolated from the rest of the environment? The second law of thermodynamics would only apply if such a condition were met. But I know, I know, that's the assumption. You did apply it to the real world, so I can't correct you much on that. But the way you're explaining it is as if you were explaining to someone who was never exposed to this law before, in which case I must stress that it's crucial for you to mention the isolated system part. Unless, of course, you're trying to deceive your audience? Yeah, that's probably it. Uh, entropy is uh, talking about the uh, increasing disorder in a system. An isolated system. Yeah, don't get that wrong, folks. It's an isolated system. Not a closed system, by the way. They're two different things. I have actually seen a lot of other atheist channels make this mistake. An isolated system is one that doesn't allow the exchange of both matter and energy. A closed system doesn't allow the exchange of only matter. The second law of thermodynamics only applies to isolated systems. Not closed systems, isolated systems. And certainly not open systems. By the way, I just praised you for not using the word disorder. <sighs> Let's take the sun as an example. Uh, in the sun, you've heard me talk about the sun many, many times on purpose, because the sun is the, is the source of all the energy in our solar system. All right, so again, I'm going to assume that you're assuming that the solar system is isolated. We're going to assume no comets or asteroids will ever enter the solar system. And also the energy from other stars? No? Okay, yeah, I guess in that case you could say the sun is the only source of energy in our solar system. And within the sun, every minute, sorry, every second, uh, 600 million tons of hydrogen are converted into helium every second. Oh, uh, what? Why did the camera cut to me? There's nothing wrong with this section. Keep rolling the clip. Except for photons, which convert into light and heat and energy. What do you mean except for photons? When two hydrogen atoms combine together, you get both helium and photons. What do you mean you convert hydrogen to helium except for photons? That just makes no fucking sense. Let me uh, just play this clip one more time. And within the sun, every minute, sorry, every second, uh, 600 million tons of hydrogen are converted into helium every second, except for photons which convert into light and heat and energy. <laughs> yeah, no, let's just move on. So actually, all the time the sun is getting slightly smaller. Now, in billions of years time, which we're not going to see because Jesus Christ is going to come back first. <laughs> oh my god, that one statement just took away all your credibility, man, just saying. In theory, the sun would burn out completely. And that's called entropy. Because the amount of energy and uh, available energy in the hydrogen atoms in the sun is decreasing all the time. So eventually we e end up with heat death. Yeah, the sun will eventually run out of energy, just like all stars. But heat death? Come on, man. Heat death is the predicted fate of the universe in which all the stars run out of energy and the universe becomes a state of uniform energy throughout. That's not going to happen just because one star runs out of energy. Just our sun dying doesn't make heat death happen. 
all the stars would have to run out of juice. Now this doesn't just apply to heat and energy, it applies to all systems. I'll give you another simple example. I have a very messy study. And in my very messy study, there are lots of drawers and, uh, and lots of different places I put things. And every three months, they get very, very messy. And I have to tidy that up. And it's because of entropy. No, 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 no. That is a comparison that helps people visualize it. The second law of thermodynamics doesn't literally apply to a messy room. It just describes entropy, and the units of entropy is joule per Kelvin. That's not a measurable thing in the concept of a messy room. I get you're trying to use an analogy to help your audience understand, but come on, at least mention it's an analogy and not what it really is described by the law. There's increasing disorder in our own bodies. I used to be able to run quite a reasonable marathon, but I can't do it anymore. I can't run a reasonable marathon because of entropy in my own body. That is not described by the second law of thermodynamics. You can't run a marathon anymore because you're getting older, which is caused by the shortening of telomeres and various other factors, not because your body has increased entropy. This fails in all levels because your body is never even an isolated system ever in your life. Besides, what about small kids? When they get older, they will have better bodies suited for athleticism. So what's going on with them? Don't tell me that the second law of thermodynamics reverses in a person's first few years, then goes on its regular course after, let's say, the age of 30? That's absolutely ridiculous. And you, Richard Kent, you were a doctor before. Now, what do the evolutionists teach? They teach something completely different. Oh boy, I was wondering when he would get to evolution. They teach that 13.8 billion years ago, there was a big bang. Sadly, evolution and the Big Bang are two separate topics. I'm surprised so many religious people can't make that distinction. And something which arose by chance, called a singularity, exploded and caused a highly ordered system. Oh my god, you motherfucker. Yeah, sure, at first glance it is very counterintuitive. How did stars and solar systems form from the Big Bang if we follow the second law of thermodynamics? Well, here's the thing. When gases in a nebula combine due to gravity and form stars, it actually releases a lot of heat. And if you do the actual calculations, the entropy of the stars with the released heat is greater than the nebula before the formation. Therefore, this still follows the second law of thermodynamics perfectly. Let me describe the system in terms of planet Earth. Our Earth is 93, 93 million miles away from the sun. Dude, even you use miles? It's gonna be a long day. And we're traveling through space at 60,000 miles per second. And the, at the equator, the equator is spinning around at 1,000 miles an hour. However, if we were 1% closer to the sun, we would all boil. If we were 1% further away, we would all freeze to death as one solid block of ice. I don't see how this has anything to do with the second law of thermodynamics, but I'll address this anyway. Your claim here is just flat out false. First of all, you know that the Earth isn't always the same distance away from the Sun, right? It's actually closer during the wintertime and further during the summertime of the Northern Hemisphere. The average distance the Earth is to the Sun is 150 million kilometers. During January, the Earth moves closer to the Sun until it is about 147 million kilometers away from the Sun. During July, the Earth moves further away from the Sun until it is about 153 million kilometers away. This is a distance of 3 million kilometers from the average in each direction. Let's take a look. 3 million divided by 150 million gives us 2%. Oh, would you look at that? The Earth regularly moves 2% closer and further away from the Sun. It looks like you just flat out lied. Second of all, life could still be around even if the Earth were significantly closer or further from the Sun. It also largely depends on our atmosphere and the amount of greenhouse gases present. But let's say you're right. Let's say if the Earth moves just slightly out of orbit, we would burn or freeze to death and life would never have happened on Earth. In that case, I have to stress that there is an estimated 10 to the 24th planets out there. A huge proportion of these planets are potentially habitable. The Milky Way itself is estimated to have billions of potentially habitable planets. The chances of life forming anywhere in the universe is basically 100%. So life can form in any of these planets, and you would still be wondering how fine-tuned our planet is. But the reality is that it's not fine-tuned. It's probability. A probability of 100%.
Now, there are literally millions and millions of different parameters on planet Earth, and I don't have to go into all the details. Millions and millions? Holy shit! Except to point out that the whole solar system is very carefully and intricately designed by a super scientist called Jesus Christ. Very, very carefully, with literally millions and millions of interdependent parameters. And I'm guessing you're not going to go into any detail on how the solar system is so carefully crafted. Because really it's not. It's not crafted to perfection. But the evolutionists like to break the rules of thermodynamics. The first and the second laws of thermodynamics. Uh, no, not really. We're not breaking any laws. They like to say that with an explosion, things get... With an explosion, things get more organized. Yeah, explosion is a horrible way to visualize the Big Bang. The Big Bang is just an expansion of space. It is still happening right now. It did have a very high velocity 13.8 billion years ago, but that doesn't make it an explosion, and certainly doesn't make it analogous to any explosions we have here on planet Earth. Have you ever seen an explosion? Have you seen a firework explode? Have you ever seen on, on a film? Have you ever seen an explosion? Have you ever seen something organized as a result of an explosion? Well, I'll tell you what, I haven't. I have never heard of an explosion causing a, an, an organized universe. That's the thing with a lot of you creationists. You use intuition when thinking about science. You know intuition is one of the greatest dangers in science. You cannot use intuition. So, you can't imagine the Big Bang forming stars? That doesn't mean it didn't happen. Besides, when looking at the universe, we are looking at completely different properties than what we're used to on planet Earth. In conclusion, just avoid intuition. The answer is, evolution is rubbish. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the Earth. You didn't even touch evolution at all. And even if you disproved evolution and the Big Bang theory without a shadow of a doubt, it still doesn't prove your religion. You have as much proof of Jesus Christ creating the universe as you do of Lord Vishnu creating the universe. Anyway, I am a bit upset that he didn't touch evolution because I had a whole explanation prepared for it. Oh well, you guys probably don't want to hear it anyway since you've already probably watched a ton of other atheist channels explain it. But anyway, that ends our video today. I hope you enjoyed it, and if you did, subscribe to see more videos like this every week. See ya!